Um, really, what I wanted to do is to just sort of frame some of the things we talked about yesterday and to perhaps talk about some of the things that we're going to be discussing in some of the workshops today. To actually recognise retrofit, although the Energy House sits at the core uh, of the work that's going on in the university and the work that we're hoping to do with you know, the, the communities of practice, you know, people who are actually trying to solve the problem. Um, it's a bigger problem than that and it's more complicated. Um, we've got energy, uh, energy policy, carbon emissions, fuel poverty, energy security, these issues that uh, Mike Kelly touched on yesterday. Some statistics. Um, these, these have been around for a while. I think these are from 2009. I think Evidence is an important part of what we do, and rather than sort of say, oh, you know, 26% of this, that, and the other, actually, we need to gather more evidence. I think there's a lot of anecdotal evidence out there about what's working, what's not. One of the things that we were going to try and do with the Energy Hub is be a point where we can swap that information, we can perhaps analyse it in big groups, and perhaps get a real understanding of, of what's happening at scale. Um, we have to think systemically. We have to think about the grid. Again, you know, Professor Kelly touched on this. It's not just about bunging things in houses. It's actually how the whole system works. And understanding that that system starts with the extraction of fossil fuels right down to what's known as the derived demand of people using energy in their homes. People don't necessarily use energy for energy's sake. They use it to stay warm, to improve their health, to entertain themselves, to cook food. Um, around ooh, it'd be seven or eight months ago, uh, we got practitioners in um, in a series of two roundtable debates to actually say, you know, what are the problems for you? And the agenda, even in that short time, has moved on quite a lot. What this actually showed us was there's lots of things that, that hook together to make the problem such a complex and, and, from our point of view, you know, a very interesting problem. It's about controls, it's about the technology, it's about the psychology and sociology, it's about policy and regulation. And this is how we're sort of framing the problem, certainly uh, from our perspective. You know, policy regulation, industry standards, how things connect to the infrastructure. You know, can we go all electric straight away? No, is the probable answer to that. People, things around fuel poverty, but also around health issues of when we improve the performance of a house, do people reclaim that back as a, a comfort dividend? The technology obviously is incredibly important because I think there's you know, a series of innovations, um, some you know, highly technological and some actually just based around sound engineering principles that we can bring to bear. Um, research and data, again, the evidence base is incredibly important. Um, and also, it's not just about the technological fix, it's how we install it. And there's you know, compelling research to show that actually we can have a good solution if we fit it badly, if we set the levels and controls wrong. Um, you know, that won't work in the way that we expect it to. Uh, this is um, a, a slide from Peter Rickaby, uh, from Rickaby Thompson, who are doing, uh, they're a consultancy doing a lot of work in this area, and they, uh, he kindly came in and presented for us in December. Um, really, you know, the price in relation to the solution and understanding what the right target is, is, is one of those things. Is 80% the right target? And I think probably Charlie in his workshop will probably say that 120% is the right target. Um, those types of issues need to be bottomed out. We need to understand actually what we're reaching for because those will drive the technological solutions and the, and the behavioural interventions that we uh, undertake. So, you know, are the models correct is another issue there. I've touched on the targets. Uh, there are a lot of models out there where we assess the performance of houses, and they're actually laden with assumptions. And we actually, you know, one of the things we're really interested in is to understand, are the assumptions right? Uh, because if we're actually using those models as targets, if the assumptions are incorrect, we're shooting at the wrong targets. Uh, and actually, what are the other objectives? Because, you know, things like the feed-in tariff, okay, they're partially about micro-generation, but they're also about jobs and growth. Uh, touch on this, I mean, certainly the, the, the energy house is, is something that, that we can really have a go at looking at these questions. We can rapidly test things. Uh, we can, you know, change the climate, understand, you know, does an air source heat pump work at minus six? Does it work at high moisture? That's Charlie raising his eyebrows again. Um, and understanding, actually, 
you know, it's about the combinations of things as well. It's not just about one product. Actually, fabric first uh, and the relationship of products and controls incredibly important. And I think the Energy House is a real opportunity to uh, uncover some of these issues. Uh, we did a survey uh, with Fusion 21 and Procurement for Housing. We have a knowledge transfer partnership with Fusion 21 looking at, at, at technological and commercial interventions and um, also behavioural interventions. Um, we did a survey with 134 um, social housing providers and looked at the things that, that, that are starting to be adopted. Um, obviously, you know, with things like CERT and, and warm front and decent homes, the insulation things uh, are being picked up. But actually, we can see, you know, there's an increasing use of, of newer technologies being adopted. Um, and it's something, you know, we'd like to keep following up and try and see how the pattern of how we're retrofitting our homes is changing. You know, what works? And actually, I think this is... This is um, a, a really key question because sometimes the data on products is a, a lab testing actually what works in the field what works in the energy house actually gathering as much data about what are the successful products and sometimes an engineering solution put in the hands of people um, can actually you know really underperform because people are used to using gas central heating or they're used to heating their homes in certain ways and they don't understand the change that is required from them uh, what are the performance risks for different technologies? What are the extremes of temperature? And I think this is you know, particularly significant around the adaptation agenda. If it gets warmer, if it gets wetter, what are the risks that we're going to face with the new technologies? The question of archetypes. and you know, we, We're doing some work on archetypes with Fusion 21. There's lots of people doing work around this archetypes. Actually, what do we need to know about houses so we can make the right choices? And it's... In many cases, you know, demonstration products teach us one thing, but actually, how do we make the right decisions at this consumer product of retrofit scale? How can we simplify the models that we use to make sure that we're still making the right decisions? And obviously, you know, what are the limits to what we do? How does this connect to the energy infrastructure? Touching on Professor Kelly's um, questions that he raised uh, yesterday. Production questions. What are the risks with the products? What do we need to know about putting things on site in people's homes? What do we need to know about the levels of quality? Because when we talk about insulation, you know, the levels of tolerances have to be greatly improved. And there's actually a lot of um, good evidence around even new build housing that you know, we build them as designed to code level five and they're performing at two and three. And actually, it's around these installation risks that these things are happening. How can we do it for less money? And I think this is probably a, you know, an incredibly important question. Obviously, when we start doing things at scale, production costs fall. But, you know, actually, are there things that we can do that are, are simple things um, that actually generate real, real savings? Ideas around what processes we can put in place. And, you know, I think there's going to be new entrants to the market who may think differently about this problem. Um, and we need to understand what that's going to mean for the retrofit market. This is a, a, a slide um, developed. I won't go into massive amounts of detail on this. Um, this is a slide done by Luke Smith from Fusion 21, um, and it's a, a PowerPoint classic. Uh, what this actually shows us is the landscape shifting. Um, CERT will be coming to an end. Green Deal's emerging. FITS is, uh, you know, it's underway now. The renewable heat incentive will be coming in shortly. There'll be a new energy company obligation coming in. Actually, these things are really important because the things like the taxes and incentives actually make us, give us ideas about, you know, what technologies that we use. And we can have a good in engineering solution. And if the figures don't stack up, we may reject it. You know, how is this going to work for tower blocks and, and people getting together for district heating? How is this going to work for owner-occupiers? And, and we need to understand that. And we need to understand, you know, certainly from a point of view, is do we need to be saying something to the policymakers about making it easier and making it better to do the things that are right for people in their homes? <coughs> what is the policy going to be? Um, I think... You know, the broad detail is laid out. Uh, actually, some of the, the nuance of it is still to, still to be discovered. And are they working as intended? Um, 
you know, we've, we've seen with FITs, it was the view that we were going to turn them into bonds, was the view that we were going to securitise and have these rent-a-roof schemes. You know, people will respond to them in perhaps sometimes unpredictable ways, and we need to understand whether these outcomes are, you know, actually driving carbon and fuel poverty, but also, you know, are they equitable for the people as well? We need to think about that. And it is the relationship between people, the models, the policy, the technology, and those types of solutions we need to think about. I, I, you know, I referenced the, the SHAP report on Community Green Deal. That does think about all these different elements that we can bring together um, in terms of jobs and skills and new businesses, supply chains, but also communities, engagement, and you know, the money side of things. And all that tied around driving a performance of energy. Behaviour change. Um, I was at a, a, a tower block on Monday, um, uh, owned by uh, a, a social housing provider, and they had put in a, a district heating scheme and they had a building management scheme. They had one person in the block using four times as much energy as everybody else. So, you know, no matter how elegant our engineering solution, you know, we cannot make it idiot-proof because they're making better idiots all the time. <laughs> and we have to understand the fact that behaviour can make as big a difference as putting in a new heating system. It's about values. It's about the ideas that people have. It's about how we pay for our energy. It's also about just habits. Some people walk out of a room unconsciously, they'll turn the lights off and other people won't. You know, it's those kinds of things. And, other things that we can do with design that actually change those animals without having to sit in watching Coronation Street and putting our arm up in the air every time the motion sensors go off. Um, we need to understand the different demographics and we need to understand the different tenures. Um, social housing, to a greater or lesser extent, is, is a sort of easy place to do the, the learning. But actually, we've got a private rented sector which has a, a complexities of its own and we have these owner occupiers. And, you know, they don't have asset managers sitting there picking their technologies and thinking the right things to do. How do we work towards a retrofit consumer product that actually we can guarantee for 10 years, that actually thinks about things like... Um, OK, I've just been given the nod. The, uh, OK, I'll just uh, go very quickly. Um, we're making a commitment to work with industry, although the BBC said three years... You know, we're hoping to get things out as we go and we want to build the evidence base and we want to work with industry, with the communities, with policy makers to come up with the best answers. And that's me. Timing is everything. Thank you very much.